Hey everybody, I'm Jeff Gluck from SBNation.com. Welcome to AmpUpThe88.com. We're happy to have you back with us. Of course, AmpUpThe88.com is where Junior Nation comes up to amp up for the race every week. So we're happy you're back again. Um, just a reminder before we get started, um, there's a couple of cool things on the site that I always like to talk about every week. One is, the number one thing is that the da there's daily autographed giveaway items from Dale Jr. Um, that you can win every single day. So... Um, that's pretty cool. You can. I, I don't know if you guys have won any, or I don't know if you can win twice. Are they allowed to win twice? I don't know. But keep entering, because um, that's a cool thing. And there's also a video uh, off-track video series, and this week it's Car Chief David Bryant talking about Chicago Land. So check that out. And then um, there's the Twitter feed of Spotter T.J. Majors, uh, the winning spotter from the Nationwide race last week. So you can go back and check out some of his tweets as well as about his new baby. That's always cool. Um, the next chat, there's not going to be a chat next week, but in two weeks we'll have Marshall Carlson here. He's the general manager of Hendrick Motorsports, so be sure to come back for that. But right now um, we have with us the vice president of competition, Ken Howes. How are you, Ken? I'm fine. Very Thank nice you. to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, Ken, we have a lot of questions here from Junior Nation. Um, before we get started, um, could you just tell us how you got here? How Take us through your career and, and tell us how you got to this point. The short version? Sure, the short version. <laughs> it would have to be. Um, how did I get here? Um, it, it's, it's really, most of my life I've been racing, and in the, almost the mid-80s, about 1983, I was um, asked to manage a South African-owned team that was racing in America in the what was known as the IMSA Sports Car Series. And you're and from South Africa, for people that don't know. Yeah. And uh, I came over. It was supposed to be for one year. And I never got home. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really the, the short version. Gotcha. Well, uh, Caspian10 wants to know, what are some of your day-to-day -day responsibilities as vice president of competition? For those of us who aren't in it, what does that, what does that mean? What do you do every day? It's a, it's a sort of important sounding way of saying the race teams are really my responsibility. Um, and I think most people know um, when things like that go well, nobody will really know about you or hear about you, and that's fine. When it all goes wrong, there's somebody around to mm -hmm. try to help out. But uh, it covers a lot of areas. Um, we have, as everybody knows, there's four race teams um, racing against each other on the weekends, uh, during the week. There's a lot of uh, sharing information, technology, people working together. And so it's, it's a little odd. We're, we're not the only race teams that do this, but uh, sometimes that causes conflict, so sometimes there's a bit of refereeing involved. Um, a lot of times you're trying to allocate the, the resource, trying to work out the best way to spend the money, what areas, um, and, and different teams, different crew chiefs will have different opinions of what's important to them. So again, there's uh, decisions to be made there. There's logistics. Uh, we move a lot of people every week uh, to and from the racetracks. It's uh, somewhere around 90, to almost to 100 people some weekends that we're moving from Charlotte to a racetrack and back again. So uh, a lot of cooperation there with our aviation people, try to make sure we don't lose anybody, forget somebody. Mm -hmm. And so then there's always last minute emergencies that uh, have to be dealt with. Um, try to keep it all running smooth. Um, keep peace in the valley is probably the way I like to see it or think about it is uh, just try to make sure we're all getting along. Okay. Well, along those lines, uh, Dale Jr. Fan 50 is asking, how hard is it to make four teams equally competitive? I know it's a big emphasis here that you, you guys all want to kind of have everybody with the same stuff and then go with the different setups from there, but how, how hard is it to maintain that? It's, it's from, from my point of view, it's, it's not that hard. Um, other people might think it is, but Again, we, we work really hard to make sure that everybody has access to the same equipment, uh, the same information, 
and the teams, the crew chiefs, the drivers will, will all deal with that in their way, um, trying to find out, sifting through all that information, all that set up information, the data, what is going to work for their situation with their driver. Um, and we're, we're fortunate now, uh, we think we've, we've got a good group of crew chiefs together. They, they get along well, they understand what we need to do here to keep this all going. And uh, it, it's, it all works. And mm -hmm. it's taken us a long time to get there. But uh, right now I feel good about it. Um, a lot of people um, I think would maybe want to work for Hendrick. And so DEJ fan 88 is wondering, what is the biggest perk of working at Hendrick? What's the best thing about working here? Um, well, there'd be a few things there. If 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 I had to answer that question, uh, there, there's there's a few things. Um, you you get to be around race cars all the time, and that's not bad. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty good, especially if if you're a competitive person and racing is what you know and love. That's uh, it doesn't get better than that. Um, but more importantly, probably is the people here. Um, there's, there are so many hard-working, creative people. It, it's, it's fun to be around mm -hmm. and uh, keeps me young. Good. Um, okay, so obviously you're at the track all the time. You really, really follow the sport and knows all the ins and outs. And so Jeb21 is asking your opinion on this. If you could change one thing about NASCAR, what would it be? Change one thing about... I think, gosh, there's, there's, there's so much right with NASCAR. Um, probably be something, there's, I think right now there are four breaks in the schedule. And if somehow, some way they could squeeze one more and then spread them out a little more evenly, break mm -hmm. the season up into a little more even groups of races, I think that would help everybody immensely. Um, especially the traveling folks get some time together with their families just on a more regular basis than it is right now. Mm -hmm. um, where did you work before you came to Hendrick? Race Fan 12 is asking. Um, before I met Rick Hendrick, I, I was working in racing in America in the IMSA Sports Car Series for a privately owned South African run team. So when you when you came for that, then you went from there to NASCAR, or um, no? I met. Uh, I was introduced to Rick Hendrick while we were still sports car racing, and the reason for that was that uh, General Motors were wanting to get uh, back into sports car racing, and they had a Corvette GTB car that uh, had been built some years before. They wanted to. Do, um, compete again in the series and uh, I was just fortunate to be in the right place at the right time where they approached Rick to run the car. Um, he didn't have anybody who was involved in that series and at the time I was available with a small group of people. And so from 19, from the summer of 1985 through 1989, um, I worked for Rick Hendrick, but uh, it wasn't uh, in NASCAR, it was in the IMSA series. We were based in Indianapolis, and uh, it was only in 1990 that uh, I started attending NASCAR events and trying to understand okay. NASCAR racing. Well, now that you've been here uh, for a while, Flates23 wants to know, what, what has been your greatest achievement or proudest moment at Hendrick Motorsports? Obviously, you've been through many of them. Um, gosh, that is, that is a tough one. Um, I think one, one that comes to mind immediately is, is the year we finished first, second, and third at the Daytona 500. Hmm. Um, that was, I think, something we'll always remember, especially because of the timing of it all, um, just everything that was going on, and, uh, 
know, Jeff's first win at Charlotte, the, the win at Indianapolis. There, there are so many, it's hard to, hard to pick one out. Been very fortunate over the years, been a lot of, a lot of highs. Uh, of course, there have been some lows, but uh, we try to remember the high ones. So it's interesting to me that you said, you, you kind of point out some of the individual races rather than the championships came to your mind first. Any reason? Um, no, now, now that you point it out, um, somehow, yeah, individual races come, come into my head and, mm -hmm. and I don't know why. It's probably championships are the result of a long, hard year and it's, it's a coming together of all of that and it usually it's not resolved until the end of the year mm -hmm. and everybody's pretty worn out. And <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, gosh. Um, you, it, it somehow doesn't stick, but the the events somehow, and maybe that's just me. Um, Shaft Dog wants to know, what was the first race you ever attended, and how old were you? Whew. You are making me go a long way back in time. <laughs> um, I think that would have to be, uh, I would have been maybe 13 or 14 years old. It mm -hmm. would have been in South Africa um, at a track. It, it still exists, a place called Kalami. And uh, there used to be long distance sports car races there at that time. And that's my, my first memory of, of a big event that I attended as a spectator. There may be others, but that one comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, Brandon Barber is asking, how did you react when the Sprint Cup Series went back to the spoiler? You, you take it in stride. Um, rule changes are not unexpected. We <laughs> deal with it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it, everybody will have an opinion. I, I liked it. Uh, I just, maybe I'm my generation, we're a little older. Uh, I prefer the look of a stock car with a spoiler. Mm -hmm. A stock car is supposed to have a spoiler. Um, obviously, there'll, there'll be different opinions on that. But uh, so for that reason, um, I was okay with it. Uh, it has meant some work for us, uh, understanding the effect in the car. Um, but uh, I think uh, I think it's good. Um, we have another question here from um, Dances with Cat. She is wondering, does HMS have scouts like Major League Baseball teams do um, to look for new driving talent? Not, not really. Not, not in the sense that other major sports do. Um, now we we do, I think collectively, uh, we keep our eyes open. We we watch all the races. We see the nationwide events. Um, Arca. Uh, and every now and then somebody will will do something that will catch your eye. Um, somebody will do something special, but it's it's under the radar in, in that sense. There's there's not a conscious effort out there because it, it, it's very difficult to to grow these things. We tried in the past to to have development programs, and it just turned out we weren't very good at it for mm -hmm. some reason. So. Um, we we tend now to just watch for that special talent that uh, every now and then shows itself and uh, sometimes we're in a situation where we can do something about it, sometimes we're not just because of timing and circumstance. Okay, well um, you're chatting live with um, Hendrix, VP of Competition, Ken House. Um, this is AmpUpThe88.com where you come to Amp Up for the race each week. So keep your questions coming. We want to hear some more good ones. We're halfway through. And um, let's see, the next one here, Sean Larson would like to know, um, what do you tell a driver when they're not running well to give them motivation? That depends on who the driver is. Um, they're all very different and, and they respond to different things. Um, I would have to, now I'm in, in a sense, I'm in a fortunate position, I, I don't have to do that much if at all because uh, I'm not on the radio, two drivers in the race, we leave all that kind of communication to the crew chiefs, or uh, sometimes I may be able to help a crew chief who's perhaps having a difficult time in a race, but it, it 
really varies um, as, as to who the driver is. Uh, some drivers like a lot of information, like a lot of motivation, and others, uh, others don't. Mm -hmm. they, some just prefer some information about uh, how the race is unfolding, what may be going on. Um, I, I call those drivers, uh, some of them are just self-motivated, they, they understand what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, some are different, some, some need some encouragement. It varies. Um, Jay Palm Jr. has a question here and he says, with your background, how do you feel about adding more road courses to the cup schedule? Would you like to see that? No, I, th I think it's, it's about right the way it is. Um, the, the two tracks that are on the schedule now, we, we enjoy going there. Um, I do. I think a lot of people do. Sonoma is a nice place to go. It's the right time of year. The weather's usually good. Mm -hmm. um, and then upstate New York at Watkins Glen again in, in August. It's a good place to go. Um, I, I think it's enough. The we, we are an oval track series. Um, the two road events have their place, but uh, that, that's enough um, to me. Okay. Um, GC Bodigan wants to know, what is your favorite track on the schedule? Favorite track? I think that one immediately comes to mind is, um, that would have to be Indianapolis. Hmm. Um, it's, to me, the just the tradition um, the history that, that you sense when you go there, if, if you've paid any attention to the history. Um, you, you're aware of it all around. Uh, the fans are great. It's, the weather's usually pretty hot, but uh, just the, the tremendous crowd, um, the atmosphere, especially on race day, it's, uh, it's a great place to be. And uh, technically the, the track is difficult. It's it, it, there's a lot of reward there when you get the car right and running fast and running competitively. It really is a tough place to be able to deal with. Um, the speeds are high, and uh, so it's it's a it's a huge challenge. And mm -hmm. uh, when you succeed at it, that that's a great feeling. Um, speaking of these tracks, some we have some upcoming races. We got Chicago, Indy, Pocono. Um, I think Watkins Glen, Michigan, Bristol. Out of out of the upcoming races um, that are coming up this summer and, and early in the chase, um, Sean Larson wants to know which upcoming race do you think the 88 has the best chance to win at? I think of the, of the tracks you've mentioned, um, any one of those really. Um, the, the the team has made. I think everybody's seen. Um, in, in the last few months, they, they've progressed. They've had some solid runs. Um, they, they faded a little, um, got a little far out of uh, the top 12 where we, we were pretty nervous. But lately, it's, it's all coming back. And uh, it's such a fine line and so competitive these days. The, the difference from winning to 10th place is, is so close mm -hmm. that uh, on any given day, given, uh, given a few breaks, given a, a little luck, um, of, of the tracks you've mentioned, it, it wouldn't surprise me at all um, that, that Dale could, could suddenly put it all together and the team have a great day. Yeah. All right, well, I'm sure Junior Nation's happy to hear that. <laughs> um, let's go back a little ways. Uh, T-Dog23 would like to know, um, what was your role in the development of the T-Rex car? At that time, um, I was in charge of the R&D department uh, that actually built the car. So, um, again, the group of people involved, it, it wasn't a very large group, but it uh, goes back to what I said earlier. Um, there were some talented people involved at that time. Uh, some of them are still here. Rex Stump, the, the engineer uh, who came up with most of the ideas, um, the fabricators, people who built the car. Um, my responsibility was really just uh, coordinating it all, getting the car built. Um, but I, I, most of that success I, I attribute to the fortunate group of uh, 
talented people that I was uh, lucky enough to be around. Okay. Uh, Dale Jr. Fan 50 is wondering, what do you think about drivers competing in multiple series at once? I know NASCAR, Brian France had said last week that they're possibly looking at some sort of um, rule change or something that would maybe impact how cup drivers compete in the nationwide series. But what do you, what do you think about what, that whole thing? That's, that's a tough one. Um, if, if there was a way, uh, I think you could make the argument that the, the cup drivers shouldn't be in, in the nationwide series. But the, the reality right now is that the series needs them, the racetracks need them, the fans, I think, uh, like to see them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so th there's a lot to think about if, if any changes are, are being made. Um, it, it's tough for, for the young guys who, who are trying to make their way up, uh, racing against the veterans and in, in the bigger teams. Um, but the, the other side of that is, is racing is a tough business. and uh, So if, if you can succeed um, against that challenge, it, it one of those things we, we would notice it if, if, if a small team with a really talented driver is doing well against the experienced veterans, um, mm -hmm. we'll notice it and we'll, we'll start paying attention to you. So there's the good side to it, there's, there's right. downsides. Um, MU Tiger wants to know, um, how has your job changed over the years? I'm sure, you know, the sport's always changing, but your role, how has that, how has that evolved? Um, it, it's gone from uh, where, when I first started, I, I when I first joined Hendrick Motorsports and, and started being around the NASCAR teams, I was I was really learning a lot, trying to contribute what I could with with some knowledge of of other racing. Um, then I got really close. I was Ken Schrader's crew chief for three years, I think. Um, so that was very hands on. Uh, now the teams were a lot smaller back then. Hendrick Motorsports was a whole lot smaller, very different time. So I've seen a lot of changes um, in, well, it's 20 years, I guess, in NASCAR, how things have grown. So that's probably the most change we've had to deal with is the, the technology that, that's developed over the years, but just how the company's grown and uh, learning how to deal with all that, how to handle it all, um, going from small groups of people, small teams, to where we are today with uh, 450, almost 500 people. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's been a lot to learn along the way, and so I'm a little further removed from the race cars and, and hands-on than perhaps I'd like to be, but that's, that's just how it is, and uh, I understand it. And, uh, keep going. You mentioned um, crew chiefing for Ken Schrader for a few years. Um, appropriately, we have a question from K Schrader Fan 1 who wants to know, is Ken Schrader the funniest driving personality you have worked with? Uh, in, in one sense, well, probably in all senses, probably yes. Um, he, he is... Uh, he missed his vocation. Perhaps he should have been a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great person to be around. Um, learned a lot. Um, he, he was, I think everybody knows that that was the first person I crew chief for in NASCAR. So uh, I was pretty new. I had a lot to learn. Um, Kenny was pretty patient with me most of the time, and uh, it was an enjoyable time. Um, drivers like that, I mean, are those the ones that? you look back on fondly working with, you know, the guys that, are those the kind of guys that really stick out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, I, I've been fortunate over the years, and when, when I think about it now, I, I should have a, a previous question where people asked about the perks of working at Hendrick. That's one of the other perks, is that uh, I've been able to be around a lot of great, great race car drivers over the years, and uh, great characters, um, they're all different, it's it's a list. Gosh, I couldn't begin to think how long that list is, but uh, it, uh, for the most part, they, they've all been great to be around. 
most of the time race car drivers are, are very intelligent people and uh, I've enjoyed it. Um, Foxy Coxie is wondering, uh, do you have a favorite sport besides racing? Mm, that, that's, that's a tough one to answer. It kind of depends what time of year it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being South African, we, we love all sports and uh, some of the sports that we grew up with aren't played over here, so I do miss some of them. But uh, right now, um, I, I think if I had to separate it all out, probably what in America is known as soccer is, is probably my favorite. And then the NFL pro football, probably close second. Mm -hmm. um. Um, JP Mark 42, speaking of soccer, is wondering if you're rooting for Germany or Spain in the World Cup coming up this afternoon. And, and um, I think there's three teams. We're down to three teams now. So you have a favorite? No. Uh, somebody asked me that earlier today, and I, I, I just don't have a dog in the fight anymore. Um, when it started out, they were, I think most people know South Africa were in the tournament because they were the hosts and America were in. And so I had two teams to root for. Um, I was a little concerned should they ever meet. Yeah. There, there was going to be a conflict in my head, but because uh, I, I am an, a U.S. citizen, but I'm South African born, so uh, you get a little torn. But uh, it, it didn't happen. And so. Uh, I, I watch the games now just out of interest. Uh, it, it's it's only every four years that you get the opportunity to watch the very best players in the world, and uh, you need to enjoy it while you can. So, mm -hmm. no favorites right now. Just hope for a good game. I, I hear you. Um, here's Beckbeat five five five's question. She's li she's wondering, would you like to see the Cup car design integrate brand identity like the new Nationwide car has been so successful in doing? Absolutely, yeah, um, and th there are plans for that to happen, so uh, for the fans who, who are hoping for that, it, it is coming, um, hopefully sooner rather than later, but uh, I think it helps everybody. I'm, uh, I'm certainly a fan of it. Uh, I'd like to find a way where I understand why NASCAR do what they do, but I think we can uh, keep the performance of the cars close and have the identity which will help the manufacturers um, with their involvement, but again, uh, give the fans the, the identity that I think they look for um, to support their particular brand. It, uh, it needs to happen, for sure. So you're supportive of the changes they're all talking about and everything? Yep. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd support uh, even more, much as they can do. And this is going to be a tough question, uh, the last one to get out on here. Um, Dale Jr. Fan 50 is wondering, who are the top five race car drivers you've been able to work with? If, if it's too hard to narrow down, how about just giving us some of the top drivers or your, your favorites? My favorites. Uh, if, if I go through my whole career, maybe, um, not just NASCAR. Um, I had a lot of success in South Africa um, early in my career in the 70s into the 80s with uh, not a very well-known driver, um, Ian Schechter was his name. We we had a lot of success together over a lot of years, so that's that's always going to jump into my head. Um, the South African driver who drove the Corvette GDP uh, was a very unusual character. Um, had had a great time being around him, and uh, and then as we get uh, closer to the present time, of course, the the drivers around here. Um, Jeff has had a phenomenal career here, a lot of success. Um, Jimmy has, again, had great success in the time that been, he's been here. He's, he's a great person to be around, just a, just a good person. Um, did I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a good job. Bit, you did yeah. a good job. <laughs> um, well, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And um, thank you, everybody, on AmpUp88.com for joining us, where you come to Amp Up for the race every week. And um, the next chat we're going to do is two weeks from today. It's That's July 21st at 1230 p.m. Um, Hendrick GM Marshall Carlson is going to be here. So that will be really cool. Is there anything we should ask Marshall or any, any good questions that you have for him? No. Uh, not not without thinking about it. Uh, you know, 
Marshall is uh, he's a good guy. He's he's the right man in, in the right job at the right time. So uh, maybe we'll be able to get some questions in there when the time comes. It'll okay. Brainstorm a little bit. We'll brainstorm. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Um, again, thanks for joining us on AmpUp88.com. Have a good day.